Welcome into the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com. As always, presented by Heidemann Associates. We're here at America First Field for a 5A championship matchup between the number 10 in the RPI Maple Mountain taking on the number 5, the Bountiful Red Hawks. I'm Alex Napolis, happy to be joined by Alex Tumalip. Tumalip, it's the last game of the day. Yeah, it's the last game of the day. We've already had a couple of crackers here today. The Park City Green Canyon matchup was a pretty good one. Lone Peak, as expected, took care of business against AF. But I'm more interested to see what happens in this one because here is Bountiful, one of the premier powers in 5A girls soccer, going up against Maple Mountain, the team that, you know, has has been kind of a Cinderella story as a 10 seed this past, uh, this past playoffs. They have upset on their mind, Maple Mountain. They were able to eliminate Tim View. They eliminated Clearfield. They eliminated Olympus, and now here they are in the final, the championship match, looking to continue upset Central. Yeah, and then the other thing is, too, Napolis, I mean, the, the teams Maple Mountain beat were no slouch. I mean, Olympus was was seen as a dark horse favorite along with this bountiful team to win the championship at the start of the season. So when you look at the quality of teams that Maple Mountain has beat on the road to get to this final alone, their resume is pretty impressive. And you can't forget about Clearfield. Yes, yes. Clearfield, who had Bountiful's number this season sure in region did. play. And Maple Mountain were able to get the better of them. Yep, and really that's really that's what we're looking for, right, in this game. I mean, we take a look at the Heidemann Associates keys to the match presented by the full-service law firm committed to winning. You, the client, is Bountiful. You got to take advantage of the situation. I mean, they were, they were able to escape against Brighton in that penalty shootout slog on Tuesday, but they don't have one of their key players today, Kate Holbrook, who is suspended because of a red card she accumulated in the second half of their game in regulation on Tuesday. Now, while while they may be able to get away with it, a team like Brighton, they got to take advantage of their opportunities today. But for Maple Mountain, they need a complete game. They cannot afford to sit back. We saw this with American Fork. They cannot afford to score one goal and sit back defensively. They've got to make sure they keep their foot on the gas for all 80 minutes against a really good, bountiful team. And we are seconds away, moments away from starting the battle here at America First Field for the 5A State Championship. And we're underway as Maple Mountain get the ball rolling and a crunching tackle right off the bat to start as a foul committed by Maple Mountain. Boy, is that a sign of things to come right there. Annapolis, big time hit right off the bat. Shows you that these two teams are going to be fired up and they are going to be bringing the energy here this afternoon. Mateo Hall coming across, committing the foul. Free kick coming up for Bountiful. And look, for the Red Hawks, they are no strangers to the situation. Last year, they made it to the state championship match only to bow out by a shootout to the eventual champion Skyline. And now they're back. Redemption on their mind. Another opportunity to take the ground. What do we expect from Bountiful this afternoon? Well, Bountiful, well, Bountiful again, like, they they have been in this position before. This is their second consecutive final that they've reached. But they weren't able to get a whole lot of opportunity, a whole lot of opportunities going to the back of the net in that penalty shootout victory. It was a nil-nil draw after extra time, but they needed penalties to get through. Now, Maple Mountain knows if they can hang around in this match, they can create some havoc, so I think the key for Bountiful is can they find their footing early in this match? Like what we saw with Lone Peak against AF earlier today, can Bountiful find their footing early on? Because Maple Mountain is dangerous. And like head coach Lou Plank says here, as Hellowell trying to play a ball in behind. Nicely defended there by Maple Mountain. Like head coach Lou Plank said for Bountiful, look, last year weighed heavy on them, losing in the shootout. You go to the shootout against Springville, you go to the shootout against Brighton, and you're able to edge those out. So a little bit of redemption in those shootouts for Bountiful, and Lou Plank and this team are coming in with confidence after winning those games in the shootout. Yeah, and, and again, like, it, right, it, it just adds to that storyline of, you know, Bountiful being here before, and Bountiful being on this stage before, but you also remember Maple Mountain, the last championship appearance in 2017 was the one they won. So they're no strangers to this situation either. Yes, it's a young team, but they still have a lot of experience. Both of these teams should should probably use that experience to their advantage here this evening and this afternoon. As you mentioned, as that ball goes out of bounds. As you mentioned, Maple Mountain, one-time state champion in 2017. For Bountiful, four-time state champion. The last time they won was a 2006 
Both teams looking to end that title drought and take the crown here in 5A as Bountiful on the attack as Hellowell gets it out wide to Sorensen. The cross into the box, nicely defended and cleared out by the Eagles, only to find Bountiful, but a foul called. And that's going to be key right now for this Maple Mountain team is can they attack quickly off these set pieces because they know Bountiful is trying to flow back to the ball and create possession opportunities for themselves. Kind of like what we saw what Green Canyon did in that 4A final where the Wolves just took control in the possession game. Can Bountiful create possession opportunities and open up space? That ball won back by Matea Hall and the Eagles only to find the feet of Sorensen. And here comes Bountiful on the attack as that ball... Looking to play it out wide in the direction of McFeeters and out of bounds and out. It's going to be thrown for the Red Hawks. McFeeters to play it in will settle it to the freshman Emmy Sorensen. Nice cut there from Emmy Sorensen as it takes a deflection. And Sierra Jacobson doesn't get the best touches on it. Hellowell coming up with it. Out on the wing is Oakley Jensen. Jensen the cross who will go out of bounds and out for the goal kick. Oakley Jensen, the senior, who scored the decisive penalty, put it into the back of the net, and now Bountiful are here in the championship game once again. Gully will have a goal kick, and will just clear it out for Maple Mountain. Takes a bounce, lands at McFeeders. Hannah Bailey over there on the far side, making a defensive challenge. Hannah Bailey had the golazo against Olympus. That ended up being the decisive goal. And good on Maple Mountain defensively for holding off that Olympus comeback. Olympus was able to score early in the second half and just held on to that 2-1 lead. And that's why I said, you know, the key to the game was going to be a complete match for Maple Mountain because against a team like Bonneville, you can't afford to sit back. You can pick your choosing times to go forward, but once you attack, you got to commit to it. And you can't afford to just sit back and defend for 60, 70 minutes and think that that's going to make do against a team like Bountiful. Chroman Oak looking to play Ruth Swain in behind with a ball over the top, but it's just going to roll out of bounds and out for the goal kick. And Alex, to add a little bit more to that Cinderella story, to add a little bit more to the number 10 seeds fuel, they started the season 2-7, and seven, including losses to Timview, where they lost the, the regular season series to Timview. And then after that 2-7 and seven start, they've won 11 of the last 12 games, including beating Timview in overtime, including knocking out the number two seed in the RPI, and in beating the Olympus Titans. Jacobson loses that one in the middle of the park, and now Chromanoke is going to recover for Maple Mountain. Hallowell winning it back. McFeeders... We'll get it out to Winsler. Now here's Emmy Sorensen. Just, just to jump on your point there, Napolis, about the Cinderella story, let their story sound similar to, to the Harriman Mustangs, their men's team who won the championship as an 18 seed back here in 2022. I remember I was calling the match. I mean, they took out Corner Canyon in a shootout, and then they took out West and Farmington back-to-back -back weeks in extra time. And they started pretty rough. And they had a pretty rough start to their season. They had a losing record coming into the coming into the coming into the, the playoffs. So when you're talking about a team that started slow and finally found their footing, getting hot at the right time, that's this that's this Maple Mountain team right now. Not to draw comparisons to the Harriman team, because I still think Harriman's team on paper probably was probably had the best Cinderella run we will ever see, probably if not in Utah soccer sport high school soccer history possibly utah high school sports history because no one will ever i think top an 18 cb winning a championship it's so hard to do that uh, ball out of bounds on the far side it's going to be a throw in for maple mountain in the early goings here we got 33 01 left on the clock early in this one tied at nil nil and Ava spinning in possession. And I want to bring attention to Ava spinning real quick because she has big shoes to fill. We were talking about this earlier. Kate Holbrook has been a, a big reason as to why Bountiful has been so successful defensively. And she's out tonight. Ava spinning has big boots to fill. Yeah, she really does. I mean, Holbrook just fills up so much space at that midfield spot. 
to find a replacement for her. They turn to a junior like Ava Spinning. You're right, Napoli. She's going to have a lot to do because Holbrook does a lot of good job, especially in the midfield, clogging up the middle and making sure passes don't get through those channels. With her out, you turn into Ava Spinning, and you're almost trying to change your formation like three days three days prior to the match. So that's a little, a little bit of a challenge in and of itself. My question is going to be, though, in the second half, how much is Spinning going to have in the tank if... Maple Mountain ends up pinning Bountiful back in their own end for, say, a 10-15 minute period where they can't clear their lines. Bountiful looking to put on an attack here as Hellwell is trying to connect with Oakley Jensen as that ball goes out of bounds. And I also want to bring attention to Oakley Jensen, the fullback for Bountiful. Does an incredible job of getting forward. She uses her speed to join the attack and basically overload this near side wing for Bountiful. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's really what we've seen, the theme of the, the afternoon's been, right? Napolis, I mean, a lot of the teams we've seen today in these finals have just been pressing, pressing, pressing high up the pitch with the fullback. They're on cue. Jensen steals it high up the pitch, tries to put a shot on frame, and it will go wide of the post. Goal kick coming up for Maple Mountain. Just what we were talking about, Timolip. Yeah, je definitely. I mean, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a common theme all afternoon. I mean, when we've seen teams go forward, like Green Canyon, like Bountiful, like Park City, they're always pressing with two. What I mean by what we mean by that is like they're pressing by two with two at the back. So it's a bit of a risk, honestly, because you're keeping your fullbacks high up the field, but at the same time, you're trusting that your defense is going to be there when they break. Here comes Bountiful on the attack with Micah Page, the freshman, who pulls it back near the top of the box. The shot coming in. And Gully comes off her line to cut that one out. Spell Sorensen was trying to pick at it, but Gully does well. That ball will just be booted out by Anya Gully. And now Oakley Jensen booting it up the pitch, looking in the direction of Elise Kessler. Kessler using her body to shield it, wins it. Trying to play it through to Sorensen, but Chase Dean coming up big for Maple Mountain. Here comes Bunce in the middle of the park. We'll settle it to Cromanoke, the other goal scorer of the semifinal, out to Hannah Bailey. Bailey will play it on the wing to Jukes. And another ball. We're looking to play it up the wing, but it'll just trickle back to Daisy Williams for a bountiful. The one thing I'm noticing here, Napolis, early on, as we're about 10 minutes into this match, is every time a ball comes into the midfield for Maple Mountain, there are at least three or four bountiful Red Hawks around the, around the ball. Look where the possession is right now. You got two against one back here. That's a sign of a really organized defense right now for this, for this bountiful team, and it's been one of the hallmarks of Lou Plank's team all season long is that organization in the midfield clogging up and making play predictable on the outside. Maple Mountain trying to play it out of the back. Nice step from Kessler, who gets a deflection. And now here come the Red Hawks with Hellowell. Coco Hellowell up the sideline to Jensen. Jensen now near the edge of the box. Trying to cut it back, but nice defensive shield in from Cromanoak. As that ball will go out of bounds and out for the goal kick. Cromanoak coming back from her. Defensive midfield position to shield that one out. Not have not let Oakley Jensen have the opportunity to cross it in. Hannah Bailey now in a foot race with Kessler as that ball is played out. Throwing coming up for Red, Bountiful Red Hawks. Yeah, that wasn't a very good goal kick clearance there by the goalkeeper. Gotta find a way to get to the outside there, channels. That's just a force into the middle of the field and caused a lot of problems there on the back end of that for that fullback for Maple Mountain. Brought down by Kessler. Kessler looking to get around in the box. Hellowell gets a foot on it, but Cooley reads it well. Maple Mountain now with an opportunity to play it up and out. It's going to be Jacobson trying to bring it down the middle of the park. Lost it. Cleared by Bountiful. Here comes Sierra Jacobson now. We'll play it to Cromanoak. Up to Bunce. Up the sideline now. Great opportunity as that ball is in through Jukes. Jukes with an opportunity to cross it in. Cuts back. Looking for Swain. Can't bring it in. And cleared out by Bountiful. And that's the first real chance that Maple Mountain has had in that attacking third. 
Hallowell does a good job of keeping it in bounds. Waiting for support as she's looking to play Kessler in behind. Kessler now in a foot race with Dean. Off her line is Goalie who doesn't get a good clearance on it. And then Bailey just coming across to get rid of it. Oh, that was... There were some missed heartbeats there in that defense because goalkeeper came out off her line. And that was... That was a few inches away from being a disaster there defensively for Maple Mountain. Lucky they were able to get away with that one. Played out by Chase Steen and now a throw in coming up here on the near side for the Bountiful Red Hawks. It's going to be Oakley Jensen to take. Jensen will play it in and will Keep it short to Sorensen. Sorensen back out to Jensen. Jensen can cross it in. Does. Looking towards Hellowell, who just misses it with their head and still Bountiful keeping the pressure, trying to win it high up the pitch. Has to just play it out. Bountiful Red Hawk throw. Over on the far side, McFeeders plays it in. It's now going to be Emmy Sorensen who brings it down. That ball out wide. Back into Emmy Sorensen. Nice shielding there from Sorensen to get around her player. The freshman settling it for Winsler. Winsler trying to play it through. Hellowell heavy touch. Back to Winsler. And one back by Maple Mountain. Here come the Eagles trying to hit on a quick counter. Bunce will play it out wide to Jukes. Kelsey Jukes. Looking to get around McFeeders. Does using her speed. And now Jukes with an opportunity. Taking it in. Roberts steps, still Jukes in possession, and then how about Olivia Roberts coming up huge defensively, timing that tackle perfectly. Corner kick coming up for Maple Mountain. But how about Kesley Jukes on that play, taking that really from almost her fullback position and just sprinting almost 60 yards, I think, from where we saw. I mean, I swear it was 60 yards. It felt like it was 600 because she was just running for... Running for space there. Great job by Jukes to force the force the defensive error there in a corner here. Dangerous chance here for Maple Mountain. Maple Mountain makes a sub prior to the corner, and now we'll have a set piece opportunity coming up as Chromanoke looks across it into the box. Far post. And just skims past the hands of Daisy Williams. And it looks like it's just gonna trickle out for the bountiful Red Hawk throw in. Olivia, or excuse me, Oakley Jensen here on the near side to throw it in for Bountiful. And it's now going to be Kessler looking to bring it down. Does. At least Kessler ball filtered through to Sorensen. And Gully off her line well to collect and relieve some of that pressure. Gully will now punt it away. Takes a bounce near the middle of the park. And it will land at the feet of Jacobson. Jacobson to Bunce. Bunce does a good job to find Chromanoak. Chromanoak up the sideline looking for Jukes. Jukes trying to get her speed around McPherson. Takes a deflection off of McPherson. And we'll have a goal kick. One thing I think that's interesting about this first 15 minutes or so in Annapolis is that it looked like Bountiful had found their footing and set the edge here in the early going, but it looks like in the last few minutes, Maple Mountain looks like they found their footing, especially with Jukes on that right side, using her pace to get around the defenders. Maybe that's where you would think Maple Mountain would trundle a little bit more towards as we head to the middle part of this half. And Jacobson with a nice interception in the middle of the park, plays it out wide to Piper Hoyt. The freshman Hoyt against Jensen, and Jensen... Doing a great job defensively to make sure that Hoyt did not have an opportunity. And now in corner kick coming up once more for Maple Mountain as Chromanoke running over here to the near side to take. Set piece opportunity, four in the box for Maple Mountain. The cross comes in far post. Off of Jukes and into the back of the net. It's a goal and an early opportunity for Maple Mountain as they put it into the back of the net. one nothing. the number 10 leads. 
And there's your early goal. Remember, Maple Mountain scored early in that semifinal against Olympus on Tuesday. That time it comes off a set piece. I'm not sure who it ricocheted off of, but it looked like it was chested down. And then just chaos ensued in the six. I believe you're right. I believe it might have been Jukes that poked it over the line. But either way, how about that? Maple Mountain fires a warning shot across the bow and they take full advantage. And Bountiful's on the ropes here early in this one. What it looked like they had the advantage early on, Napolis. Absolutely. Bountiful got off to a really good start. And then all of a sudden, Maple Mountain just grows into the game. A set piece opportunity that finds the back of the net. And now, how will the Red Hawks respond? Winsler commits the foul. Free kick coming up for Maple Mountain. Cannot underscore Annapolis how big the first goal is in a championship match like this, but you cannot underscore it more if you're a lower seed like Maple Mountain, how critical that is, especially coming 18 minutes into the ball game. Like we said, Bountiful had the better of the play for the first 10, 5, five 10 minutes of the ball game, but it seems like now the Eagles have grown into the game and they have Bountiful scatterbrained a little bit here in this middle part of the first half. Maple Mountain, only their 34th goal of the season. They're not a very high-scoring team, but they've been able to put on this incredible run here to the 5A championship match, and now they lead with 21-35 left to go. I know it sounds cliche at Naples, but I have to say it. You know, it, it, only matters. it only matters if you start scoring in the big games. And let me tell you, you put up two goals early against one of the favorites in Olympus early on Tuesday... And you put up a goal in the 18th minute against the bountiful Red Ox team that had everything to play for coming into this ball game. I'm sure that Maple Mountain sideline, we can see it right now. They're standing up on that sideline. They're they're loose. They're cheering. They're fired up. They are they are in this ball game and they know it right now. And Bountiful's just looking a little bit tense right now. Olivia Roberts has to come across to cut it out. Nice defensive effort there from Maple Mountain but still bountiful in possession as Winsler has to come across now loses it to Bunce. Maple Mountain and Bunce waiting for support. Bunce will now cut back inside. Nice step from Roberts and now Hellowell looking to play it up and bountiful need to respond as that ball up the pitch and it'll just trickle out of bounds and out for the goal kick. For Bountiful, this is the moment where you have to look at your top, top players. And they definitely have the players to do so and make a difference here. As Sorensen, being one of them, has an opportunity who will just go straight into the hands of Gully. But you're down a goal early. You have to rely on Bell Sorensen, who has 16 goals, 6 assists on the year. Coco Hellowell, who has 15 goals, 16 assists. One of the top assisters in the state. And then Elise Kessler, who has 11 goals and 12 assists on the year. And this is all without Kate Holbrook, by the way. you got to remember, where was Bountiful going to get their spark plug on their attack? With Kate Holbrook out, where were they going to get their spark? Right now, it just looks a little pedestrian here for Bountiful. They're just... The last two shots, Napolis, got to call it like it is. They, they're just shooting the ball to shoot right now. they got to get more flow in their offense. It looks very pedestrian. They're playing like they're tight right now. Maple Mountain spraying around passes freely here as now Oakley Jensen will now intercept and Bountiful trying to play it up, but it'll go out of bounds and out. And there you see right there, again, body language. The difference in the body language right now, Napolis. The Maple Mountain sideline is cheering. They're up. They're fired up. They're in the game. Bountiful, a lot of hands on hips, a lot of stunned faces out there. And if you look at the the, the Bountiful sideline right now, some heads, some heads just dropped. Like there is a clear, there is a clear difference in the, in just the tone and the and the feeling of this game right now. The momentum clearly in favor of Maple Mountain. Ruth Swain gets ahead on it and now spinning, looking to clear. And that'll land at the feet of Jacobson, and not the best of touches there from Jacobson. Out for a bountiful throw. Oakley Jensen here on the near side, and for the Red Hawks, 
still plenty, plenty of time. There's no need to, to start forcing anything or as that ball goes into the hands goalie. No need to start forcing anything. No need to, you know, get the head down. There's plenty of time in this one. Yeah, agreed. I mean, we sound like a broken record, but there's still 58 minutes left. There's still an hour of football left to get one goal. I mean, if you get one chance here, if you're Bountiful, I know it seems bleak right now, but, you know, you're still in this. I mean, yes, it's an early goal, but you still gotta, you still can play through it. You can still run your offense, run your attack as freely as it flowed the first couple of weeks. But for right, but uh, as of right now, Bountiful just, just looks like they're forcing it a little bit too much. Uh, a little bit too much a little bit too much action pushing right now by Lou Plank's side. Something that, of course, we're not used to seeing as we got somebody down here. It looks like that's Bunce. Yeah, it does look like it's Bunce. You're right. Or actually, it's uh, it's Piper Hoyt down there with the left back. Now, Napolis, I... It looked like she took a hit to the back of the head earlier. She's... She's been she's been struggling ever since. I don't know if you saw it, but she took a blow to the back of the head. It looked like on that cha on that aerial duel. And Napoli, she just I don't think she's looked kind of right ever since. And so the freshman Piper Hoyt heading out, and she'll get looked at by the trainers. Obviously, we hope Piper Hoyt looks or is going to be okay and can carry on. She's very dynamic in the attack for this Maple Mountain side. And now we're going to have the goal kick played out. Brought down by Swain. And recovered by Bountiful. Only to be won back by Maple Mountain now. It's coming up to Matea Hall. Hall who can't get past Oakley Jensen. Nice defensive effort there from Hall as it goes out of bounds and out. Bountiful throw. Ball played over by Jensen. It's going to be out for another bountiful throw. You need somebody to step up here and be a spark here. Something to provide you anything, really, at this point. Napolis, I know it's a 1-0 game, but this is a championship match. You need somebody to spark you right here with a little bit of physical play, scoring chance, something. Here comes Sorensen taking it to the corner. Bell Sorensen against... Jacobs, the cross near post, lands at Kessler trying to poke it through to Hellowell still an opportunity for Bountiful here comes Page who can't get past Kromanok who comes up big defensively with the clearance, Bountiful now coming the other way, still on the attack play on says the ref and will bring it back for the foul on McPherson Yeah, that, as soon as that ball was bashed aside I knew I kind of knew that was coming back for the foul because that was a a bit of a late challenge there by the Maple Mountain defender and like I said you need something you got a dangerous free kick here Maple Mountain gotta hold your line but Bountiful gotta get on the goalkeeper I would bounce this sucker on the penalty spot right in front of the goalkeeper and create havoc big set piece opportunity coming up for Bountiful as that ball's crossed near post towards the penalty spot and across the face of goal it'll go out of bounds and out for the goal kick and a good opportunity here for Bountiful but just unfortunate that no one was on the end of it goalie will now play it up and out for Maple Mountain brought down by Swain as that ball's played wide to Hannah Bailey Bailey cuts it back supports herself with Mc with uh excuse me McMaster back out to Bailey Hannah Bailey carrying for Maple Mountain cut out by Emmy Sorensen Micah Page bringing it down Sorensen now looking to push it up for Bountiful near the middle of the park is Emmy Sorensen up the sideline now to Kessler and Elise Kessler can't keep it in bounds it'll go out for the throw Uh, another missed opportunity there for Bonifil. I mean, it's it's been that kind of it's been that kind of first half here in Annapolis, especially this last ten or fifteen minutes or so. 
Maple Mountains had Bountiful on their heels defensively. Or rather, Bountiful's had Maple Mountains on their heels defensively, but they just can't seem to take advantage of the raw opportunities right now. And in a game where it looks like opportunities are going to be few and far between, that could mean dividends down near the end. Paige will try it from distance, and it's safely into the hands of Anya Goli. And look, I felt this way a little bit during the semifinal. I'm feeling it a little bit now, but it just seems that something's missing in the attack for Bountiful. They're missing that final pass. They're missing and not, uh, the final opportunity to get into space and create some havoc. We just haven't seen it so far from Bountiful in the attacking third, which is a team who's scored 62 goals so far this year, but they're missing something in that final third. Yeah, and, 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 and again, and again, Kate Holbrook not being a part of the lineup, I think has something to do with it. With her being out, we talked about coming, we talked about coming off the top, you know, it, <laughs> You know, where are they going to get their spark plug Spark plug for their offense, you know? And like you said, we just haven't seen the pieces all click together for Bountiful. I mean, they've had the opportunities, but right now it just looks like they're shooting to shoot. That ball up the sideline now to Jensen. And Jensen does a good job to keep it in, but one back by Maple Mountain. And here come the Eagles trying to break with Mateo Hall. Nice step there defensively from Winsler. As that ball goes out of bound and out for the throw, Maple Mountain decided to change things up. Ruth Swain will be heading to, this, to the bench for a breather as the goal scorer, Kesley Jukes, checking back in. Kesley Jukes with that goal is now up to seven on the season for the junior forward. As that ball goes out of bounds, spinning throws it in. Jensen gets a foot on it, trying to float it over. Lands at Kessler. At least Kessler trying to turn. It's going to be Jacobson who does a good job. Or excuse me, that's Denton. Denton does a good job to shield it off, and Kessler commits the foul. Free kick coming up for Maple Mountain. As Hannah Bailey will just boot it away up the sideline. Looking for Hall. Jensen coming across defensively. And again, just missing a little bit more crisp passes here for Bountiful. Winsler. That ball out wide to Hannah Bailey. Bunce gets it out to Jukes. And that ball will go out of bounds and out for the Maple Mountain throw. We got 10.50 left to go here in the first. It's a number 10 seed Maple Mountain lead. One goal to nothing thanks to that goal from Kesley Jukes. Foul called. Going the other way for the Bountiful Redhawks. What's critical now, Naples, as we head into this last 10 minutes of the first half is who can gain control of it? Can Bountiful get control of this match back or can Maple Mountain continue to assert themselves? We've seen a lot of evidence so far that, like you said, we've seen it before. Bountiful not crisp in the, in the attacking third. Meanwhile, Maple Mountain taking full advantage of their opportunities. But a sloppy giveaway there could trigger something here. Hello, well, with a good opportunity for Bountiful as that ball filtered through, looking for Sorensen, comes off the foot of McMaster. Yeah, McMaster who got the touch on it, so it's going to be out for the Bountiful Red Hawk corner kick. Well, Maple Mountain scored on a corner kick last time. Can Bountiful respond with one set piece of their own? Like I talked about, you need a spark right now, anything right now for Bountiful. This is their opportunity right here. The cross from Hellowell near post. Gooley off her line. Page trying to track it back for Bountiful near the top of the box. Out to Hellowell. The cross far post. And comes off of Gooley's hands, but a foul will call. At least Kessler was able to poke it out, but got a little too much of Gooley on that one. Yeah, that was an easy call right there. I, I think Gooley was going to have that one all the way. And again... Kessler just, I think, taking out a bit of frustration on that foul right there on the goalkeeper. That was going to be goalkeeper ball all the way. 
Hello almost gets ahead on it to win it. And now Coco Hello brings it down. This is Micah Page playing it up to Kessler. Kessler near the edge of the box. Inside the box now. Kessler with a nice little bit of footwork, but cleared out by Maple Mountain, only to be found back by the Red Hawks. Here comes Emmy Sorensen. Can't connect with Hellwell, and that ball played up and out. It's a foot race between, it looks like Liggett, and then spinning comes across. Will come off of Sierra Liggett and out for the throw. It kind of looked like it was a miscommunication at the back, didn't it? I mean, one defender was supposed to be covering, but then all of a sudden the defender dropped off and let the fullback come up to take that. I'm not so sure there wasn't miscommunication on that play there, Annapolis. Throwing for the Red Hawks as Micah Page brings it down, playing it up the pitch, looking for the head of Coco Hellowell. Kessler will now have to drop back to recover. That ball floated up over the top in the direction of Sorensen. Sorensen now against Ashlyn Denton. In the middle of the park now for Emmy Sorensen. It's now Kessler. Elise trying to play it through. Again, recovering well is Maple Mountain. That ball takes a bounce. Sierra Liggett trying to bring it down. One back by Bountiful. That ball out wide to McFeeters. Back to Olivia Roberts. Roberts to spinning. Bountiful with a bulk of the possession here late in the first half. But again, just not able to really find any opportunities to test Anya Goli in that Finding their opportunity in that final third that they need to get back into this one. Here comes Sorensen to Kessler. Near the edge of the box. Off of Chase Dean. And out for a corner kick. Bountiful set piece opportunity coming up. Well, last time they tried to go for that little scramble in the box, create chaos kind of thing that Maple Mountain did. Now they got people... They got two on the goal line, but they got everybody loaded up toward the back post. Let's see if they try to flow everything down toward that back post. The cross in the middle of the mix. And Jensen will come up with the shot. And it'll go wide of Anya Goli's post. Out of bounds and out for the goal kick. Yeah. Substitutions coming up for the Maple Mountain Eagles. Yeah, that, that was really well defended there by... Uh, by Maple Mountain, really compact in the middle to stay disciplined and make sure they force a shot from way out. That was, I mean, I tell you, Maple Mountain's defense probably better than we gave them credit for in that, that semifinal. And they're creating a lot of opportunities for the the attack to go forward here in, the, in this first half. We have 5.50 left to go here in the first. Chromanoke has a free kick for Maple Mountain. And something interesting that I've noticed, I don't think Lou Plank has subbed, made any changes yet. The starting 11 still out there for head coach Lou Plank and Bountiful. Yeah, and that kind of just shows you at Naples, right, how much trust he has in his starters right now. A lot of experience, like you said that the Red Hawks have in their starters right now, especially the senior late in starting lineup. They really have trust. But at some point, if this continues, you got to figure Lou Plank's got to make a couple changes. Out wide to Bailey near the edge of the box. We'll play it out towards the corner against McFeeters. Hannah Bailey looking to cross it in. And it'll go into the hands of Daisy Williams. It did go out of bounds and out, so we'll have a goal kick. Coming up for Daisy Williams and this bountiful Red Hawk side. Again, still plenty of time in this one to find the equalizer. We are 450 away from the break. Let's see if Bountiful are able to find the equalizer before heading to the halftime. Bunce looking to bring it down. Nice step from spinning to clear. It lands at the feet of Hannah Bailey. Hannah Bailey looking to play it up over the top. And now Kessler getting a foot on it, only to find Bailey. McFeeters gets a foot on it. Chromanoke now winning it in the middle of the park. Back to McMaster. And out, recovered by Bountiful. This is Emmy Sorensen. 
Trying to play it through to Hellowell. Not the best of passes there from Sorensen. Sarah Jacobs. Or excuse me, Sarah Jacobson. Playing it out to Piper Hoyt, who has returned. And that ball out of bounds and out. Throwing coming up for Maple Mountain. Danger sign right there for Bountiful. They had five against four up the back. You could tell Bountiful really wanted to push the midfield forward, but keeping the center back block back to protect any against any counterattacks that might come from Maple Mountain there. But a danger sign right there because they had five against the back four there. Had a lot of options for Maple Mountain to go there on the counter. Piper Hoyt trying to get around Emmy Sorensen, but it'll just trickle through and out for the goal kick. Daisy Williams playing it close and quickly to Ava Spinning. And now Bountiful looking to play it out of the back with Spinning. Spinning up to Hellowell. Takes a deflection, and now it's going to be Chase Dean to play it up for Maple Mountain. Nice step from Spinning defensively to win it back. Hellowell. Denton does a good job once more. Dean brings it down. McMasters out to Hannah Bailey. Bailey up the sideline to Jukes. Kessley Jukes, the goal scorer, looking to get around Winsler. Nice little bit of skill there from Jukes as she takes it up the sideline. Into Hoyt, who is offside. Free kick coming up for Bountiful. Boy, Kesley Jukes is just putting defenders on skates right now. You saw that little, that little turn and 360 dribble. You could tell like that goal has done something to that Maple Mountain team. They are feeling it right now. And really with 2.15 left to go here in this first half, Bountiful just doesn't look like they found their footing here. That ball out and wide. The, and it's... again, I mean, another careless pass right there at Annapolis. Winsler was trying to track it down, but the ball goes out of bounds and out throwing coming up for Maple Mountain. But we'll have another substitution coming up for Maple Mountain as Piper Hoyt will be heading to the sideline. Back in is Ruth Swain. Throwing coming up. Brought down by Matea Hall. Against Micah Page. Out of bounds once more. It's going to be Maple Mountain throw in. With Ashlyn Denton here on the near side to take. Looking to get it to the head of Bunce. One back by Kessler. Here comes Page for Bountiful. Page plays it up to Winsler. Oh, good opportunity for Bountiful. Taking the shot from distance. Not too much power behind that shot and into the hands of Gully. Yeah, and and, and, a, and not the best decision because Winsler had Sorensen. If she lays Sorensen in, that probably is danger, danger Will Robinson for that Maple Mountain defense. I'm surprised Winsler took the shot on herself and didn't give it up there because she had plenty of space to run into Bell Sorensen. And now Emmy Sorensen winning it in the middle of the park. Out wide to Bell Sorensen. Sorensen waiting for some support. Has to give it to Olivia Roberts. Roberts carrying up from her center back position. Joining the attack as that ball's out wide and McFeeters just unfortunately can't get on the end of it. Good idea from Roberts. Out of bounds and out for a Maple Mountain throw. 18 seconds left. That ball played in. Brought down by Jukes. Throwing up. Throw up coming in again. Kessler brings it down. And that'll do it. And so we reach the end of the first half here in the 5A state championship matchup. And so far, it has been the number 10, Maple Mountain, who holds the lead as we head into the break. One goal to nothing against the Bountiful Red Hawks. Tumalip, give me your thoughts on that first half. Well, I will say this, that as we've kind of watched this first half kind of unfold, Maple Mountain just looks faster. They look like they're playing loose. They're playing like they got nothing to lose. And especially Bountiful, we thought they had their feet settled into the into the first few minutes of the match, but then after that, 
it's like they disappeared off the map. So a lot of talking for Lou Plank here at halftime. I'm especially shocked, as you are, Napolis, that they did not make any subs, I think, in the first half. So Lou Plank really sticking with the 11 he's got on the field. But as far as the first half is concerned, Maple Mountain should feel pretty good about the fact that they've not only held Bountiful, they scored off a set piece, which is, you know, once in a blue moon thing to do if you're an underdog. And so that's going to take us into the break. At the halftime, Maple Mountain lead 1-0 against the Bountiful Red Hawks. We're going to take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network. As always, presented by Heidemann Associates. Stick with us for second half action when we return. <laughs> as always presented by Heinemann and Associates. We're here at America First. It is the last 40 minutes, possibly, of championship soccer. Bountiful taking on Maple Mountain, and it's the number 10 Maple Mountain who hold a 1-0 lead as we get ready to start the second half. Yeah, and you have to say, Naples, it has been coming. I mean... The, the Bountiful Red Hawks we talked about, all the underdogs today have been playing with nothing to lose. And so far, we've seen Maple Mountain play with nothing to lose. And Bountiful just so far has not been able to get on the level of the Golden Eagles just yet. I will say, though, I'm interested to see what Lou Plank does here in the second half. Because remember, we said he did not make any subs in that first half, Napolis. Will he finally cave and make a couple of subs that could change the tide of the game? Because it's clear right now that we've seen throughout the first half... Bountiful dearly misses having Kate Holbrook in the midfield as a spark plug for their attack. They need to find that spark, absolutely. They need to find who's going to step up and really make a difference in the attacking third for the Bountiful Red Hawks. For Maple, Mo or, yeah, for Maple Mountain, they've done a good job of just keeping the ball in front of them. They haven't really let players like Kessler or Sorensen get in behind and make those runs. They've done a good job of keeping the ball and the players in front of them and making some good defensive uh, some defensive tackles and good defensive cutouts to make sure that Bountiful can't get in behind. And one of the things that we noticed early on in the first half was, remember, Bountiful was sending numbers at the ball. Every time a, a Maple Mountain player was in possession, there'd be two, three, four players around the ball. Throughout the rest of the half, you didn't see all that. It looked like Bountiful just stepped back a little bit and kind of took their foot off the gas defensively, not playing as aggressive as we had seen in the first 10 minutes. I'm interested to see if Bountiful goes back to that here to start the second half. Moments away from kicking off the second half and the final half of state championship girls soccer here at America First 5A. State championship between the Bountiful Red Hawks and Maple Mountain. The referee heading over to the sideline to consult with his official. I thought we were getting ready to start. I we're honest, ready. I uh, Yeah, I honestly don't. The officials aren't ready. They were missing yeah. the ball. <laughs> yeah, they were missing the game ball right there on the field. <laughs> and I will say this, Napolis. The Viewmont Maple Mountain football game is about to kick off here in a few minutes. I wonder out loud right now how many people in the stands at Maple Mountain High have have their phones tuned into this ball game right now. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Big matches for football, big matches for soccer. Yeah, but not Kalen Hall, though. Not the head coach for Maple Mountain. Not Kalen Hall. He's got his mind on the other kind of football right now. <laughs> and now we're moments away from kicking off the second half. Here as the Eagles and the Bountiful Red Hawks square off. And we're underway. Second half. 
rolling at America First Field. Bountiful get us started. Winsler in possession. She'll play it up, looking for Kessler. And that ball goes out of bounds and out. Throwing coming up for Maple, or excuse me, for Bountiful. McFeeders here on the near side to take. Throws it in, looking for Kessler. Elise Kessler brings it down, trying to get around Hannah Bailey. Hannah Bailey, great defensive effort from Bailey as a foul is committed. Kessler clips Bailey. Ball booted away by Hannah Bailey, one of the goal scorers in that semifinal. Throwing coming up once again for Bountiful. Annapolis, the one thing you don't want to do here, I know it sounds like a broken record, the one thing you don't want to do here if you're Maple Mountain is you don't want to sit back. You want to keep ticking and picking and choosing your moments to go forward. But at the same time, you don't want to open up a whole bunch of space for Bountiful because we know, and we've seen earlier today, if you allow any of the good teams to get into space, they can make you pay. Kessler looking to play it in behind. Towards the direction of Page, cleared out by Maple Mountain. Hellowell now brings it down in the middle of the park. Coco Hellowell looking to poke one through to Kessler. Coming back, it's now Emmy Sorensen trying to win in the middle of the park. Lands at the feet of Sierra Jacobson. Jacobson trying to play one through to Matea Hall, who takes a heavy touch. And then Ava spinning coming across as that is Jacobson over on the far side. Looking to get around Winsler, but Sophie Winsler does a good job to win it back. How about Jacobson right there? Napolis, I mean, that ball was heading for the sideline, and Jacobson, people people probably watching at home were probably thinking, where the heck did she come from? She nearly darn made a run from almost near midfield to get that ball. Nice hustle from Maple Mountain. As that ball lands at the feet of Sophie Winsler, and it's now Page bringing it up for Bountiful. Micah Page trying to get around Chase Dean. Chase Dean coming up huge defensively. As that ball goes out wide to Jensen. Oakley Jensen. And then Mateo Hall recovers and clears. Throw in coming up for the Bountiful Red Hawks over on that far side. Lions at the feet of Bell Sorensen. They need a little bit more from Sorensen here in the second half if they want to get back into this one. Hellowell poking it back through to Sorensen. Back out to Hellowell, who will take it from distance. Off the crossbar! Still bountiful with an opportunity. And now that one's just going to trickle out. Throw in for the Red Hawks. And how about the crossbar Ooh. denying Coco Hellowell from distance? I have no clue how that stayed out. I don't know if Hellowell was trying to make a cross or, a, or take a shot from distance. But whatever it was, it caught the goalkeeper gully off her line. That's the first time that Maple Mountain's been caught out. Look out, here they come again. Hellowell. Kessler. Taken down, free kick. And a huge opportunity for Bountiful to get back in this one. And the Bountiful faithful are getting into it. They're alive. That's the first time, Napolis, that we've heard their fan base all evening here, really. And this is the first time, really, that we've seen Bountiful spring to life on the attack. Like, this is, this is a whole different team that we just saw. Something must have happened when that ball hit the crossbar. They seem to have finally woken up. 36 minutes left in regulation. Winsler standing over the ball. Or sorry, no, that's a nine. It's Sorensen taking the shot off the crossbar. That's two who just refuse to go into the back of the net off the crossbar once more. This time from Bell Sorensen. How? How in the world did that thing stay out? That thing was going in. That had top left corner written all over it. Bountiful. I'm shocked it stayed out. Bountiful showing a little bit of life with Paige now taking a shot and that one's gonna go out. Can't put it on frame, but it's been a good energetic start from the Bountiful Red Hawks. Two good opportunities. Getting as close as you can get without scoring as those two came crashing off the crossbar. Yeah, beat the keeper, but not the iron. I mean, 
I mean, those were hit with some pace, too, there, Napolis. I mean, that was no... That free kick was hit with some... With some extra chili pepper water on it. But somehow it stayed out. Now look out. Here comes Maple Mountain on the counter. Matea Hall trying to hit on a quick counter for Maple Mountain. Hall against Oak... Or, yeah, against Oakley Jensen. Gets around the shot. Skims past the post. And a huge opportunity for Maple Mountain to extend the lead. Daisy Williams will now clear for Bountiful. And it goes out of bounds and out. Bountiful throw. Okay, I'm awake now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm literally off my seat now here in the booth. Sorensen getting out wide to Jensen. Oakley Jensen carrying up the pitch for Bountiful. Takes a deflection. Micah Page trying to recover. Does. And now Page with an opportunity for the Red Hawks. Filters it through. Winsler trying to get it to Kessler. And then cleared out by Maple Mountain. Swain trying to bring it in. Has to settle it and support herself with Jacobson. That's out wide to Taya Jacobson. And then Jensen stepping up. Gets a foot on it. Still Maple Mountain in possession. Over looking at this near side to Jukes. Kessley Jukes around McFeeters. And heavy touch out of bounds. Goal kick coming up. Yeah, it seems... Seems like this second half just opened up a whole lot more here in the first 12, 12 minutes or so, Napolis. A lot of chances now for both sides. This favors Bonifil in the long run. Like we said, if you're Maple Mountain, you cannot afford to get into a shootout or track meet against Bonifil. Jacobson taking the shot from distance, and it's just going to go out of bounds and out for a Daisy Williams goal kick. The other thing is, too, is Napolis, I want to piggyback on that point for a second, is that in a second half like this, you got to make the right decisions. Two or three times now on both sides during the attack, we've not seen good decision-making on either side. We gotta see, you got to have better decision-making in these situations. Page taking it towards the corner as the cross comes in. Off takes a deflection, and we'll have a corner kick coming up for the Bountiful Red Hawks. And another opportunity to try to tie things up with the set piece. We've already had two come crashing off the crossbar. And we'll see what Bountiful have up their sleeves on this play. Well, Napolis, I told you. Well, Napolis, I kind of called it earlier right on that free kick from about 30, 40 yards out to skip one on the penalty spot and let chaos reign in front of the goalkeeper. This one, I would think about doing the same thing. Cross it in, cross it in, get those bodies flowing to the back post and create havoc. That ball played in near post, and penalty! We got a handball, it's gonna be a penalty for the Red Hawks. And that came out of nowhere. I didn't even see the handball from up here. I'll be honest, Napolis, I didn't either. We don't have the, we don't have the benefit. Again, the, the new IFAB laws of the game are, you have to have your arm in a natural tucked in position for it not to be a handball. That's the new rule. But apparently from the referee's perspective, the arm was not tucked in. It was in an unnatural position. And now Bountiful with a chance against the run of play, you have to say, to get back in this ball game. Salvation on the shoulders of Bell Sorensen, the sophomore from 12 yards out to put Bountiful back into this one. Sorensen against Gully. The whistle, the shot, it's in! Sorensen has the equalizer through the feet of Gully and Bountiful are back in it! And finally, finally, the Bountiful Red Hawks are awake! Here in this second half, we talked about how they needed a better start. What a start they did get, and they finally get a spark from a most unlikely source on the set piece. And now, 32 minutes on the clock. Here in regulation, a goal apiece, Napolis. Game on. Maple Mountain back into play, losing it out to Jensen. Jensen up to Page, and now Hellowell coming across. Here comes the Bountiful Red Hawks with a newfound confidence. You can just see 
the change and the shift after Bell Sorensen puts it into the back of the net to tie things up. Goal kick coming up for Maple Mountain. Bell Sorensen from 12 yards out scores her 17th goal of the season. And the most important goal as it gives the Red Hawks a chance. Bailey looking to play it up the sideline. Nicely cut out by spinning, but a foul will call the late whistle. But the referee will say that it is a foul. And now if you're Maple Mountain here, Napolis, adversity here in the worst way. How do you react? How do you respond to a punch that gets thrown at you? Kromanok will float one in towards the penalty spot. Nice defensive effort from the Red Hawks. Sorensen tracking back and clearing that defensively for Bountiful. And another header out, this time by Olivia Roberts. Kromanok again here on the near side to take the throw in. Takes a skip and cleared out by Bountiful. And the pressure kept on by Maple Mountain. Here comes Kessler trying to get around Chase Dean. Dean does a great job. Kessler wants the free kick, but instead it'll just be a bountiful throw. McFeeders here on the near side to throw it in. Kessler trying to turn as that one comes off of Maple Mountain again. Here comes Page. Micah Page brought down a foul called. Another dangerous set piece again here, 30, 40 yards out. Got to hold your line here if you're Maple Mountain. You can tell the momentum of this match has just shifted dramatically with that penalty. Hello, well. With a free kick. We'll look to float it in near the top of the box. McFeeder is trying to put it back into the mix. Doesn't get the best of touches, and now it's going to be Jukes. Nicely cut out by McFeeders to make sure Jukes could not hit on that counter. Out of bounds, Maple Mountain throw. You gotta settle play down here for Maple Mountain. It's a little too fast right now. It's speeding up just a little bit. You gotta slow it down here and you gotta get the game back in your favor. You had control for the first 45 minutes or so in this one, but Maple, uh, but rather Bountiful has seemingly come out of nowhere and has taken control of this one here in the last five minutes. Winsler with a nice move to pull it back. Out wide, looking in the direction of Page. Page in a foot race to win it. Does a good job to keep it in. And now here comes the freshman Page. No one there to collect. Winsler cuts it out, and then Jensen coming across to keep possession for the Red Hawks. Here comes Emmy Sorensen, or excuse me, now it's Emmy Sorensen. Up to Hellowell. Sorensen again. To Hellowell, losing out possession. Hellowell bringing it in for Bountiful. Out to Jensen. Oakley Jensen trying to cross it into the box. Does. Kessler's there. Doesn't get the best volley. Can't put it on frame, but Kessler at the near post all by herself. Yeah, the, the Bountiful fans were all screaming for a penalty, but honestly, that's nothing. I mean... Put it this way, if they call that every single time, then they call that, if they're gonna call that, they better call that every single time. That's about as typical as a collision you'll see in this sport. Good no call there by the official. Jensen trying to come across and win it back for Bountiful. Matea Hall does a good job to bring it down. Ball through to Jukes. And here comes Jukes against McFeeders. Saves it from going out. Now we have a corner kick coming up. Set piece opportunity for Maple Mountain to try to retake the lead. Boy, what a ball though, too, over the top, finding that little space behind the fullback. We've seen a lot of space open up on those wide channels in this last five minutes. Now let's see if Maple Mountain here tries to create some chaos in front of goal. Kromanok to cross it in. Looking into the middle and 
Bountiful can't clear, still an opportunity now played out. Hellowell coming the other way. Bountiful trying to hit on a quick counter. Here comes Sorensen, waiting for support, trying to get it out to Kessler, but Chase Dean comes across well. McFeeder steps up, doesn't get the best of touches, but is fouled, and now Bountiful can clear their lines. And that was a big time collision on that near side. Bit of a Charlie horse right there. Bit of a Charlie horse right there too as McFeeters took a nasty knee right to the thigh from Swain who was coming in full speed. And I tell you what, that is that is not got to be comfortable. McFeeters who's had a good game up to this point. She's been great at getting forward and cutting out passes from Maple Mountain. We'll have a yellow card assessed. Yeah, it's that, gonna come back to I, Chase Dean. And I, and I think it was, and I think it's the right call. I, I think honestly, Napolis, that's the right call. Cause it was late. It was yeah, late. It was from late. Dean. It was late. It was not aimed at the ball. And besides, we've had a lot of physical play already here in this one. And that's a, just a warning shot by the referee to say, hey, enough is enough. The next person that gets that gets into the middle of this is getting another caution. So Chase Dean gets the yellow. She'll have to come off. McFeeters back on her feet. Good to see again because uh, Millie McFeeters has been fantastic tonight defensively for Bountiful. So it's good to see her up. And we'll have a free kick coming up for the Bountiful Redhawks. And that yellow card should say a lot, Napolis, about the last 26 minutes and 13 seconds of regulation we're about to see. We're going to see a lot of fiery physical play. It's what we wanted to see. 26-13, tied at 1-1. Goals from Kel Kesley Jukes and Bell Sorensen of Bountiful. Jukes now in possession for Maple Mountain. Nice step from Emmy Sorensen. As that ball goes out. The Bountiful faithful not happy. They thought it came off of Maple Mountain, but we'll have a Maple Mountain throw. Jukes will bring it in. Trying to get it around, playing it over towards Mateo Hall. It's a foot race now. Mateo Hall wins it. And now here's an opportunity for Maple Mountain as Hall trying to get around Roberts. Roberts doing a great job. That shot off the volley and a huge, incredible save by Daisy Williams. That ball had Venom heading to the bottom corner and Williams just gets enough on it to push it past the post. I have absolutely no clue how that that thing stayed out. It didn't look like the goalie got enough on a, a touch on it, but just enough, as you said, a fingernail less. That sucker's in the back of the net. I have no clue how that stayed out. Cross into the box from Coman Oak. Maple Mountain looking to go ahead over the bar and out. Goal kick. Daisy Williams. Making one of the biggest saves she's probably made all season long. That's an understatement. I mean, you talk about a fingernail or so away from a different ball game. What a great cutback to recover to by Mattia Hall to even get that thing into the 18. I mean, that looked like it was going out, but somehow Hall able to recover and then sweep it back across the face of goal. And man, I will tell you, Call the cops because Root Swain got robbed on the doorstep. Coming the other way is now Bountiful. Trying to find an opportunity of their own as Sorensen battling it out with Jacobson. One back by Sierra Jacobson now. And then Oakley Jensen coming across. Jacobson gets it off to Chroman Oak. To Bailey. Bailey. Nicely cut out by Sophie Winsler. And it's now Kessler. Kessler to Hellowell. Hellowell has options. Playing it through to Elise. Here comes Kessler. The shot saved by Gully. Elise Kessler had all the time and space in the world to pick out a shot and instead just puts it into the hand of Gully. Called Annapolis. A lot of time and space. Surprised she didn't take one or two extra touches to try to slap that thing in the bottom corner. 
Instead tries to go for the side netting, but a perfect read by Gully. Jeez, this thing's really opened up here in this last five minutes. Here comes Bountiful again with Matea Hall on that far side. Or excuse me, no, that is... Uh, I can't see the number from here, Alex. <laughs> you can't see anything when the adrenaline's flowing. I mean, we're, we're all amped up here in the booth. Sierra Jacobson trying to come the other way for Maple Mountain and a foul called. Free kick coming up for the number 10. 1-1, one, one, 22 45 left to go. That ball played out quickly to Matea Hall. Hall against Jensen. Gets around Jensen, and now here is Swain playing it in. Finds Kromanoke. Kromanoke against Hellowell. Hellowell does a good job tracking back defensively. It's now Jensen against Kromanoke. Kromanoke goes down, a foul called. Yeah. It was the right call. And meanwhile, Matia Hall over here halfway near the halfway line. She just pulled up. Looks like she's grabbing onto looks like her hip. Might have taken she might have taken she might have taken a bit of a knock when she was trying to complete that pass earlier. And so we'll have a stoppage in play. The trainers will come on to take a look at Matea Hall. And we'll take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network is that Mateo Hall was able to walk off after getting looked at by the trainer. She'll come off. And we'll have substitutions coming up for both sides. Bell Sorensen heading to the bench for a breather. Free kick coming up for Maple Mountain as that ball's cross into the box near post. Side netting and out for the goal kick. Twenty-one fifty left to go. Still tied at 1-1. Goals from... Kesley Jukes and Bell Sorensen have us level as we enter the final 20 here at America First Field. That's going to be Jacobson trying to get around. Jensen does. Sierra Jacobson with an opportunity is takes a deflection off of Oakley Jensen, and it's going to be out for a corner kick. And you know what the crazy thing is, Napolis, with all this open play here in the second half, there still have not been a lot of good chances. I mean, yes, the two saves were, were terrific. But other than that, there really hasn't been a whole lot of grade-A chances here for both sides, at least thus far. Set-piece opportunity coming up for Maple Mountain as that ball is crossed in. Williams punches it out. Bailey and into the hands of Daisy Williams. Hannah Bailey looking to make put a volley into the back of the net, but into the hands of Williams. Yeah, she probably would have done better there, Annapolis, to just let it drop. And then try to settle that thing with a touch and a hit at first time. Not a lot of power behind that volley. As here comes the Red Hawks. And I think we have to talk to the, cr the crew here at America First Field to get those floodlights on. It's getting dark quickly. Yeah, the exposure... Yeah, we should point out Vince's cam Vince Francis's camera, the exposure here is is on ND filter. So we are if you look down to the field here, it is getting dark and it's getting dark in a hurry here. There's also something that we've missed for a majority of this one as that ball goes out of bounds. When Daisy Williams comes up and makes a big save, the student section will cheer on Daisy Williams. And we haven't had that all game up until now. And that just goes to show, too, how good defensively Bountiful have been in this second half. Jukes now trying to get around Sorensen. Emmy Sorensen cutting it out. And here comes Winsler. Winsler playing it to Emmy Sorensen. Sorensen will go all the way back to Ava Spinning. Spinning will give it away. That ball comes off of Oakley Jensen and out for the Maple Mountain throw. Kromenoke steps up to 
win it back. And then giving away to the Red Hawks. Here comes Bountiful. Roberts playing it up to Winsler. Sophie Winsler settles it for Sorensen. Emmy Sorensen cuts it back. Trying to find some support. And as that ball goes out of bounds and out. Throwing coming up for Maple Mountain. Eighteen twenty-five left to go. Tying at 1-1. Hellowell coming across, trying to win it. Bountiful now in possession. A or excuse me, Olivia Roberts will carry. That comes off of Mic Micah Page. And brought down by Sorensen. Sorensen, who's going to tee it up from distance and into the hands of Gully. Safely collected by the Maple Mountain goalkeeper. Gully will boot it, boot it out. And now here comes Jensen. Oakley Jensen carrying for the Red Hawks. And out. We're going to have a corner kick. Set piece opportunity coming up for the bountiful Red Hawks. Ball game tied at 1 1. And now the lights are on. And everybody in the stands cheering after the lights get turned on here at America First Field. The cross comes in. Looking into the middle. Goalie didn't have a good read on it, but nice clearance from Maple Mountain as Oakley Jensen now with an opportunity. Trying to cut back onto her right. The shot. And it takes a deflection off of that Maple Mountain defense. The Eagles trying to clear. Hannah Bailey trying to turn. Does. Ball floated up. Spinning gets ahead on it. And now it's a foot race between Ava Spinning and Ruth Swain. Spinning can't keep it in bounds. Throwing coming up for Maple Mountain. That was a dangerous moment right there for the Maple Mountain Golden Eagle uh, because Hannah, or rather uh, Piper Hoyt, was running untouched up that up that channel. If she just if if they get their head up and perhaps get a little bit faster turn on it, then I probably think then Bonifil's got some problems at the back. As we're now officially under the lights now here in at America First. Hannah Bailey. And Kessler trying to win it back, but now here comes. Reagan Anderson, who will play it out wide to Jacobson. Taya Jacobson back into the middle for Cromanoke. Cromanoke with an opportunity here for Maple Mountain. Cromanoke against three. Jensen steps up, cuts it out, throwing coming up for the Bountiful Red Hawks. Jensen throws it in. Out of bounds. It's going to be a throw in for Maple Mountain. Spinning will clear it out for the Red Hawks. One back in the middle of the park by Cromanoke and Maple Mountain. Here comes Hannah Bailey. Bailey who will push it up. Bunts to Cromanoke. Nice step as Cromanoke keeps possession. Back to Bailey. Should point on Annapolis. This is the first sustained possession we've seen Maple Mountain have really all night long. And now they might be caught out here on the counter. Sorensen out to Page. Micah Page, the freshman against McP McMasters. And McMasters sliding in well. Still Page in possession for Bountiful. Looking to play it in. And Bunts near the top of the six. Gets just enough to clear it out. Bountiful win back possession. Here comes Sorensen. Sorensen to Winsler. Will take it from distance. And now cleared out by Maple Mountain. Throwing coming up for the Red Hawks. We're getting down near the nitty gritty time here. 10, 15 minutes left to go. It's been basically a wide open second half. It really is going to come down to at this point who can hold their nerve more Annapolis. I mean, this is 
This is crunch time, basically right here. Substitution coming up for the Bountiful Red Hawks and for Maple Mountain. Coco Hellowell heading to the bench for Bountiful. And Kesley Jukes, the goal scorer, coming in or er, heading to the bench for Maple Mountain. And it's going to be another throw in for the Eagles. Liggett will bring it down. Anderson can't reel it in. And that's going to be Addie Gins who takes her first touches since checking in. Cromanoak. Gins. And now a foot race. As that ball goes out of bounds and out. Throw in coming up for the Red Hawks. Oakley Jensen on the far side to take the throw. Cromanoak gets a header on it. Bountiful winning it back. Jensen. Sorensen trying to turn. Nice defensive read there from Anderson, who doesn't let Sorensen turn. And now that ball floated up in the direction of Winsler. Sophie Winsler gets a boot on it against Bunce. Bunce trying to play it out as they win possession. Maple Mountain now can clear. Only to find McFeeders. Clearance again from the Eagles. Bunce can't hit on the top of the 18. Awkward clearance that's just going to trickle out over the far side. One back by Bountiful. Nice press. Hellowell, or excuse me, no, Hellowell is no longer on the field. Corner kick coming up for how the about, Red Hawks. And how about that hustle right there from Micah Page, the freshman? It looked like she was just going to go out and concede the throw. But how about the hustle from Micah Page? And that's twice now we've seen both Maple Mountain and Bountiful show a little bit of hustle down in the corner. Coco Hellowell now checking back in for Bountiful. Set piece opportunity for the Red Hawks as Hellowell heads over to the far side to take. Watch this to go to the back post and try to create chaos. Looking at the near post. Trying to flick it through. It looked like that was Micah Page at the near post trying to flick it. And it goes out of bounds and out for the goal kick. And that ball is cleared out. Brought in by Anderson. Anderson who will play it out wide to Denton. Nice step from Jensen as the Red Hawks win it back. Sorensen up the sideline to Page. Page doesn't get the best of touches and it's going to go all the way back to Hannah Bailey. Nice pressure here from Bountiful as they try to win it back. Good turn from Liggett. Sierra Liggett against McFeeders and cut out by Winsler. Winsler has to go all the way back to spinning for support. Sorensen. Looking to turn is Bell Sorensen and will play it back to Roberts. 10 10 left to go here in the second half. Tied out one. Can the number 10 or the number 5 find the breakthrough to take the lead here in the 5A state championship match? And, or will we head to OT for the first time today? And the other thing is, Napolis, if I'm Bountiful right now, I am going right at number 11, Chase Dean. She's on a yellow card right now. She's not been tested yet defensively in the second half. If you get an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one against Chase Dean, I would look for any opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with her and try to force her into a mistake. That ball over to Kessler. Kessler gets ahead on it, and now Paige brings it down. That ball takes a deflection, ends up back at Kessler. Dean comes across, and now Liggett will bring it in for Mountain Ridge, only to give it away. Here comes Bountiful again. Nice chase there from Micah Page. As that ball goes out of bounds and out, Bountiful throw. Brought down by Hellowell. Hellowell who will take it and into the hands of Gully. And she was looking for 
the back post. Gully will now boot it away. Brought down by Emmy Sorensen. Sorensen commits the foul. Free kick coming up from Maple Mountain. <laughs> the referee pointed the wrong way, and then he said, oh, wait, wait, wait. They're coming back. Looked like there was hand fight. Looked like there was hand fighting both ways there on that play. The same on the last one. Surprised the referee brought it back for that free kick. That ball floated over the top by Maple Mountain. McPeters will clear. Kessler now chasing it down. Out of bounds and out. Throwing coming up for the Red Hawks. 8-12 left on the clock. McPeters here on the near side to take the throw. Lands at Hellowell. Hellowell can't keep it. And it goes out of bounds now. Mountain. Maple Mountain throw. Sorensen lets it bounce. And now Bell Sorensen will bring it in for the Red Hawks. Sorensen out to Jensen. Jensen trying to connect with Emmy Sorensen. Ball given away and one back by Bountiful. LOL. Doesn't get the touch on it. And so that ball is just going to trickle through. And it'll peter out. Ah, that should be a corner. For a goal kick. Ooh. Goal kick is the signal here at the center. It looked like Micah Page again with the hustle. Getting into the back of the defender that time. Maybe got away with one there if you're Maple Mountain. You got to realize right now, 7.15 to go. Everybody's going to start giving next to nothing to win this ball game. It's only going to take one more chance from this point on to win the game. Gully who will just boot it up and away. Jukes with a high boot. Nothing there. And now Hannah Bailey will bring it in. Bailey looking to get it back out wide to Jukes. Ball goes out of bounds and out for another bountiful throw. Here on the near side, it's going to be McFeeters to take. Kessler brings it down. Chromanokes tells it to Chase Dean. Dean up. And now wide to Denton. Nice step from Oakley Jensen. And here comes an opportunity for the bountiful Red Hawks as Jensen can't filter one through. And now it's Jensen against Dean. Heavy touch from Jensen. And it's going to be out of bounds now for the goal kick. A great defending each way. Great layout defending each end there, Annapolis. We've seen it all throughout the second half. The last 26 minutes or so since the penalty. Everybody's just been giving their 125% to keep that ball out of the back of the net. And you got to love that effort. I mean, these are two teams that probably nobody would have thought in the right mind they would have been in the championship. Well, here we are, five minutes left in prime time. Watch out here. That ball filtered through. It's a foot race as Williams hesitates to come off her line. Piper Hoyt could have gone on the end of it. Out of bounds and out. Throwing coming up for Maple Mountain. But the hesitation from Daisy Williams made it seem like Piper Hoyt was going to have a chance. Yeah, and Daisy Williams, I must have... Uh, Daisy Williams, I think, uh, thought Piper Hoyt was offside. But she looked onside from our vantage point up here in the broadcast booth. Again, falling asleep at the wheel. Little things at this point, Annapolis. Could go a long way to determining the outcome of this ball game. Especially with only five minutes left in regulation. Goal kick coming up for Daisy Williams and has an opportunity to clear it for the Bountiful Red Hawks. The senior goalkeeper made some important saves here in the second half to keep this one tied at 1-1. Jacobson now trying to get around Page. And then Maple Mountain to win it back. Bunts in possession, looking for support. And now Hannah Bailey makes the run. Bailey carrying, bringing it up for Maple Mountain. Nice step from Kessler, and here comes an opportunity for the Red Hawks as Winsler pushing it up. Kessler through to Page. The freshman, Micah Page, against Dean. Dean just looking to shield it off, does, and is going to be out for the goal kick. And good on Chase Dean. And how about that, too, on a yellow card, no less, knowing she couldn't take a foul inside or outside the penalty area. Great job by Dean to hold her line and to shield her, use her body to shield the, shield the attacker off. That is not as easy as it looks, folks, when you're on a yellow card, especially. 
McFeeders here on the near side to throw it in. Bountiful looking for their opportunity as that ball looked to be hand, but will play it on as Maple Mountain win it back. Now over Emmy Sorensen, and Sorensen cuts it out. McFeeders, header from Winsler. Flick through by Page, and here comes Kessler. Elise Kessler across the face of goal, looking to turn, an opportunity, Page, shoot it, Kent! A nice little footwork here from Micah Page, but just couldn't get the shot off. Incredible defensive effort from Maple Mountain, and now here come the Eagles the other way. Step from Jensen, bountiful clear. That ball out of bounds, throwing coming up from Maple Mountain. It just looked like they, they just took a little too long there for it to develop. Micah Page probably should have hit that first time. She's probably going to be kicking herself. But how about that defensive play? You had not one, not two, but three, but four. I think up to five Eagles defenders hit the turf trying to stop any shot from getting off. And it threw off the timing of that just enough so that they were able to get the ball out of there because that was danger Will Robinson written all over it for the Maple Mountain D. That ball out of bounds. It's going to be a bountiful throw. Jensen on the far side. That ball back into play and nicely won back by Maple Mountain. Jensen steps up. Oakley Jensen can now push it up for Bountiful. Here comes Hellowell. Nice step from Bailey. Roberts floats one to McFeeders. One back by Jules, or Jukes, excuse me. Spinning will just play it out. Page trying to bring it down, does. It's going to be Coco Hellowell now with an opportunity. Hellowell has Sorensen, has Kessler, has options. Takes a deflection, and it'll go out of bounds and out for a corner kick with 140 left to go here in the second half. Overtime looming large, unless the Red Hawks can get something going here on this set piece opportunity. Well, forget playing conservative. Both these teams are playing for the win here, Annapolis. I mean, this this last 90 seconds is about to be just pure insanity. Hellowell on the far side to take the corner cross into the box near post. The header cleared out only to find Roberts, who takes the shot deflected and cleared. Throwing coming up for Bountiful. McFeeders here on the near side to take. The ball back into play. Sorensen can't get around Jukes. Ball back in for Kessler. Kessler can't get it off. And here comes Page to Kessler. Elise trying to get it behind Kent. Winsler looking for Kessler again. Cleared out by Maple Mountain. And it's gonna be another Bountiful throw in a dangerous, in a dangerous place. Kessler up the sideline is brought down. No foul. Throw in coming up again for Bountiful. Brought down by Sorensen. Cleared out by Maple Mountain. 20 seconds left. Out wide to Jensen. Jensen carries. This could be it for the Red Hawks. Can't get past. Cleared by. Maple Mountain, Swain just boots it upfield, and that's gonna do it. The teams could not be separated after 80. And so with the whistle blows, we're heading to overtime in the 5A state championship game. Tumulip, how about those last five minutes between these two sides? Oh man, I, I'm almost speechless because Bountiful had Maple Mountain just hemmed in their own end for the final 90 seconds. I said that I said the the final 90 seconds would be insanity. I didn't mean it literally, but just scrambling all over the place. What a job by Maple Mountain defensively to hold their line and to hold their nerve, but. Hope your nerves are steady because we're heading into 10 more minutes, maybe 20 more, because we got extra time. And so before we head to OT, we're going to take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network, as always presented by Heineman Associates. Stick with us 
for overtime action between the number five Bountiful Red Hawks and the number 10 Maple Mountain Eagles when we return. Welcome back into the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com. As always, presented by Heidemann Associates. Well, the teams couldn't be separated after 40. They couldn't be separated after a second 40. And so now we head to 10. We're in overtime here at America First Field for the 5A state championship match. Jukes scored the opening goal for Maple Mountain. Bell Sorensen ties it up from the penalty spot. We're at 1-1. As we're moments away from OT and Tumalib, this game has lived up to the hype. I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the last 90 seconds, really, of regulation were just insanity. I mean, Maple Mountain was hemmed in. I mean, it seemed like they had control of this, of this game for much of the first and some of the second half. But Bountiful got some life injected to them after a shot hit the crossbar. And then another free kick hit the other cross, other than the crossbar early in that second half and it seemed to kickstart them to get to eventually get that penalty by Bell Sorensen and here we are in golden goal extra time I mean now the question becomes Napolis how cautious do you play it because a lot of teams at this point are very very cautious a little bit tentative when playing here in these kind of golden goal overtime situations especially here in high school soccer give credit to head coach Lou Plank and his team was down at the break. They go into the halftime. Adjustments are made. The pep talk is given. And Bountiful came out with a new life in that second half. And have forced overtime. And the thing to watch here, Napolis, right off the top. We talked about how Bountiful did not make any subs at all in that first half. They only made two or three so far tonight. But each of those were critical in shifting the tide of the game. Now what does Bountiful do here in the first part of this extra time period? And America First Field gets loud. It gets rowdy. The fans are into it. We're into it. And we're getting ready to start the first OT. And as mentioned by Tumalip, it is golden gold. Next goal wins. So we'll play 10. See if anybody can find the goal. That will give them the crown here in 5A. The officials still talking things over. Waiting to get things started here in OT. There's actually some kids sitting down on the south end of the goal here. Remember in UHSAA, or rather the north end of the stadium here. Remember in the UHSAA in high school, you cannot have people sitting in the ends. Of, of America first field. So I think that's what they're talking about right now. They could be discussing a clock or a substitution issue right here. But I have to tell you, Napolis, are you sure we're at a high school game? It feels like we're at an <laughs> RSL game right now. As there's good energy in here from both sides, from the Bountiful side, for the Bountiful faithful, and from the Eagle faithful here. Substitution coming in as Ava spinning checking out. Yeah, I think she was actually cramping up at the end of regulation. Oh, it's Holbrook. And now it, well, we're past. Well, I guess we are. We're past not 80 minutes now. Holbrook is in. And that is why the cheers were coming because Kate Holbrook has just been brought into the match. Well, Napolis. That is probably what the officials were. I, that's probably what they were conversing as we get underway now. Is because technically the suspension for Holbrook has been played. That's true. It doesn't count in extra time anymore. Holbrook gets her first touches, but a foul oh. called. Well, that's a that's a way to get into the match. 
And now look at this. We got a free kick, dangerous spot, 20, 25 yards out. Well, Napolis, we already saw one Golasso get hit in the semis. Maybe we might get another one here. Kromenok standing over the ball. Dangerous opportunity here for Maple Mountain. If this goes in, it's over. Free kick for the Eagles. Kromenok to take. Three on the wall. Kromenok will tee it up. Williams with a big save. Daisy Williams coming up huge for the Red Hawks. And this time it's the Maple Mountain set piece that causes some issues. Daisy Williams, that ball had some chili pepper water on it going for the back of the net. The Look ball out. floated over the top. And goalie off her line, Micah Page trying to get on the end of it. And what a start to overtime here, Tumalip. Well, so much for playing conservative. <laughs> handball. Handball, yep. Yep, you we're going to get a handball. And another free kick for Maple Mountain. Can you imagine if there were fans in the supporters end right now on the south end of the field? <laughs> that would be insane. It's loud here at America First Field. Kromenok to take the free kick. We'll float one over. I like the trap that Bountiful just set there. Pick one or two or three of them. They were all offside. <laughs> but right now, it doesn't look like anybody's in any mood to be conservative here in Annapolis. That's very interesting, especially with how much these teams have played here. A lot of intense, a lot of intensity been brought to this one in the last 80 or so minutes. Now you have to queue it up and bring it back for another 10, perhaps maybe even 15 or 20 extra minutes here. It's very interesting to see that both these teams not playing conservative to start this extra time. Jensen steps up, cuts it out, and now plays it up the pitch. Holbrook trying to push it forward. Sorensen back to Holbrook, who steps up from her center back position. Holbrook will carry, looking to cross it into the box. Going for Kessler, Kromenok steps up, and now Eagle Mountain trying to come the other way. Swain settles it for Kromenok. Gets past Holbrook, and then Olivia Roberts comes across to cut it out. Roberts will now push it up for Bountiful. To Sorensen. Up the pitch now as that ball is called a foul and a free kick coming up for the Red Hawks. Kromenok still down here. Yeah, she's cramping up. She grabbed onto the bottom of her foot. And that's normally where you start cramping. Like I said, Napolis, these teams are just giving it everything and then some for the last well over hour now of well now over hour of, of football we've had here at, here at America First. It looks like the so it's coming the, the other way. They're going the other way. I thought so. It looked like Emmy Sorensen actually got a hold of the jersey first. And so while the trainers are on the pitch, taking a look at Chromanoke, we're going to take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network. I want to welcome you back into America First Field. I'm Alex Napolis. Happy to be joined by Alex Tumalip. Chromanoke, who came off limping for Maple Mountain. Well, probably one of their most important players in the midfield has just come off uh, due to some cramping. I we'll hope she's okay and can possibly get back into this one, but we'll see uh, here as Maple Mountain on the attack. That ball out wide. Holbrook coming across and will shield it off. And Holbrook commits a foul. Free kick coming up for the Eagles in an incredibly and a yellow dangerous card. Look at that. Yellow card to Holbrook. And Holbrook will have to be subbed off. Not the introduction I think that Lou Plank would have wanted for Holbrook in this match. 
Twice she gets into the fray defensively. Twice she commits a foul. And just like that, barely four minutes played here in extra time. Kate Holbrook again walking the line. Big free kick down a really dangerous area. They really got to make sure they have somebody on Jacobson here down on the, the edge of the 18 because if she makes the run in and they find her, she might have room. Two on the wall for the Red Hawks. Free kick coming in for Maple Mountain. The whistle goes. The cross. Near post. Williams punches it out and cleared out by the Red Hawks. Kessler tracking it down. Here comes Elise Kessler. Up the pitch now. Anderson brings it in for Maple Mountain against Sorensen. Ball played out wide to Tiana Jacobson. And Oakley Jensen now carries Page. Micah Page over on that far side. Looking to get around McMaster. The cross in from Page near post. Skips past the toes of Coco Hellowell. And out for the goal kick. There's just good pressure right there by that Maple Mountain defense, making sure that she didn't have enough room to get a shot on goal. Got a toe on it. But toes don't account for nothing more than a hill of beans in this game right now. Throw in coming in for Maple Mountain. Jukes trying to get around and can't keep it in bounds. Substitution coming up as Kate Holbrook checks back in and you wonder now Napolis how careful Lou Plank is going to be with her because of that yellow card she just picked up and an interesting change instead of coming back to play defense in her natural center back position she takes off Bell Sorensen for a breather Kessler up the sideline, Bailey covering, comes off the foot of Hannah Bailey and out for the throw in. McFeeters try to play quickly. Out for a Maple Mountain throw now with 350 left to go. Bailey will throw it in for the Eagles off the head of Jacobson. Sorensen trying to bring it down and now McFeeder is high boot. No call. Swain to Jukes. A ball that is missed there by Olivia Roberts. Jukes again coming across. Winsler trying to win it back. Gets past McFeeders. Roberts trying to win it back for Bountiful. McFeeders and spinning with a little bit of miscommunication. Here comes Swain, brought down, no call, and it goes out for the corner. I am shocked they didn't give a penalty. The referee must have seen that she got ball because there was no way that they got ball on that play. That should have been a penalty. Interesting no call here, but it's going to be a corner for the Eagles as that ball's whipped in into the mix. Bailey's there. The volley can't get the best of hits. Still an opportunity as Jacobson trying to turn and Bountiful can't clear. Now it's cleared by spinning. Ball's coming the other way. One back by Jacobson. Sorensen cuts it out. Bountiful trying to play it up the pitch. Here comes Holbrook to Winsler, who will leave it for Hellowell. It's now Kate Holbrook. Holbrook with a nice cut back, loses out possession, and it will land at Winsler. Hellowell to Kessler. Kessler cuts back inside. Kessler with the shots. Hits it as she falls. Not the best of connections, and into the hands of Anya Goli.
Hellowell looking to track it down. Off the head of Page to Kessler. Kessler trying to get it back out to the wing. Nothing there. Play on, says the ref. The Bountiful want the handball. It's now Holbrook. Kromenok, who's back in, will now play it up. Holbrook cutting it out. Let's it roll. Spinning will just clear. Page to Jensen. Looking in the middle now for Hellowell. A minute left. Well, let's see how conservative they decide to play here, both teams, because it looks like we're headed to a second extra time period. But with all the chances we've seen so far, no chance. I think any side is taking their foot off the gas. Page brings it down. Micah Page looking for uh, some space and opportunity. Holbrook will now play it back into the middle for Sorensen. Still Sorensen as Emmy Sorensen can, couldn't get it through. And now Mateo Hall looking to break for Mountain for Maple Mountain. Spinning coming across. Takes a heavy touch. Out of bounds and out. 20 seconds left. Chance for Maple Mountain here as they have the throw. 10 seconds left. That ball will just trickle all the way back through to Daisy Williams. And it's going to be punted away. And that'll do it. Ten minutes have been played. We don't have the golden goal. No separation between the two as we are still tied at 1-1 between the number five Bountiful and the number ten Maple Mountain. Tumalib, your quick thoughts on those ten minutes of OT. Well, yeah, it's clear they're not playing for a penalty shootout. I mean, both sides have just been going out at this whole ten minutes of overtime. It's been physical on both sides. Rod a good play on both sides. I'm just interested to see who can slow the tempo down more because it looked like, especially towards the end of the first period of extra time, it looked like things were speeding up just a little bit on both sides and it was causing a lot of mistakes, a lot of missed passes, a lot of missed kicks. It's going to have to clean up here in this second extra time period for sure. We're going to take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network. Stick with us for more OT action when we return. Welcome back into America First Field. It's the 5A state championship match, and we still have no separation between the two. We are going to a second period of overtime as we are tied 1-1 between the Red Hawks and the Eagles. Remember that the golden goal rule applies here as we get ready to start the se a second 10. Next goal wins, and if we don't have separation after that, we're heading to the drama of the penalty spot. Of course we are. I mean, it's, that's the beauty of this, you know? I mean, to be here in this spot, you know, both teams just played so, so well. And, you know, Annapolis, it's a shame somebody has to lose this match. But like I said, going into the break, I'm interested to see who could slow down the tempo just a little bit here in overtime. Because when you're going fast, you make mistakes. So I'm interested to see who can stay composed and stay in the moment and end up making the play that gives their team the championship. Otherwise, as you said, it's time to test your nerve from the penalty spot. Moments away from starting again. Ten minutes left to decide a winner here in the 5A state championship match. And we're underway once more at America First Field. Back to spinning as Bountiful hold possession with Holbrook. In the middle now for Emmy Sorensen. Holbrook flicking it through to Hellowell. Hellowell up the sideline looking for Micah Page. Nicely cut out by Taya 
uh, Jacobson. Oakley Jensen cross in near post. Kessler coming across to win it back. High up the pitch. Here comes Kessler to Page on the byline and cleared out by Maple Mountain. Here comes Swain coming the other way to Jacobson. Out wide to Jukes. Jukes against McFeeders. McFeeders does a good job defensively to cover. Roberts trying to clear. Leaves it to McFeeders. You kind of wonder just how much juice these two teams have left in the tank. Because remember, Jukes was boat racing. McFeeders down that channel early on. Now in this overtime period or this second extra time period, not so much. Ball in the middle of the park now with Maple Mountain. Jacobson gets ahead on it. And it'll land at Page. Page settling it for Kessler. Kessler back to Hellowell. Hellowell looking to flow one into Kessler. And it'll go safely into the hands of Anya Gully. Neither team willing to give any space. Two minutes played here in the second OT. Still tied at 1-1. That ball up the sideline. Cleared out by Maple Mountain. Free kick coming up. Or excuse me, throw in. Coming up. As that ball is back into play with the Red Hawks. Here comes Bountiful. Hello, well. Looking to tee up a shot. Nicely deflected by Maple Mountain. Still the Red Hawks as that ball out wide to Holbrook. So Jensen. Jensen trying to get around Hall. Nice defensive coverage from Matea Hall. And we have a corner kick coming up for the Red Hawks. And this is the most dangerous part of an overtime or an extra time period is always the set pieces. Maple Mountain couldn't cash in. Now here's a chance for Bountiful. Remember, they have everybody stacked up near that top of the 18. Let's see if they do the same thing they've been doing. Flow down towards that penalty spot and create some chaos. Coco Hallowell here on the near side to take. Set piece opportunity. Low driven towards the spot. Nicely cleared by Maple Mountain. Red Hawks recover with spinning. Ava spinning, has options, has time. We'll play it through, looking for Kessler. Nicely cut out by the Eagles. Hellowell gets a toe on it. Kept by Maple Mountain. Here comes Maple Mountain on the counter. Matea Hall into the middle now. Looking back for Hall. And up the sideline now to Holbrook. Kate Holbrook getting physical is Holbrook looking to float one in. Chase Dean deflects it well. Brought down by Kessler. Back out to Holbrook. Holbrook does a good job to shield. And they'll say it came off of the Red Hawks. Throwing coming up for the Eagles. And Tanya, Taya Jacobson did, Taya Jacobson did an amazing job here. She knew she was caught because on the counterattack as a fullback, she was pressing way high up the field, almost across the halfway line. Great job by Jacobson to recognize that and get back defensively. Hellwell try to flow one in, comes off of Sierra Jacobson. And we're gonna have a corner once more coming up for the Bountiful Red Hawks. Coco Hellowell here on the near side to take. She'll leave it for Sorensen. Bell Sorensen to play it in. Floats one back post. Roberts was there. And now Maple Mountain trying to clear. Roberts slow to get up. Back on her feet now is Olivia Roberts as that ball played back in by the Bountiful Red Hawks. In the middle of the park now for Jensen. Jensen with a heavy touch. Matea Hall coming across. Trying to win it back for Maple Mountain. Does. And then giving away. Here comes Hellowell to Holbrook. Holbrook 
Gets past one, can't get past two. Still Kate Holbrook as she's brought down. Maybe exaggerated it just a little bit, but no call there from the officials. Goal kick coming up. Maple Mountain has just been hemmed in this entire almost 15, 20 minutes of extra time here in Annapolis. You've seen a lot of huffing and puffing the last few minutes from these Eagles defenders. It's only a matter of time now before Bountiful maybe could create a little bit of chaos in the middle. Hellowell wins it back high up the pitch to Page. Finds Holbrook. Holbrook trying to poke it through to Kessler. Emmy Sorensen out wide to Bell Sorensen. Near the top of the box, the shot into the hands of Gully. Good shot from distance from Bell Sorensen. Covered well by Gully. Holbrook now into Hellowell. Booted away. Roberts can't settle it. One back by Swain. Swain to Chromanoke. Back out to Ruth Swain. Ruth Swain caring for the Eagles. Jacobson. Three minutes left. Sierra Jacobson can't get around spinning. Spinning comes in, grabs the ball, play on, says the ref, and here comes Bountiful. Out wide to Sorensen. Bell Sorensen waiting for the overlapping rub from Kessler. Now out to Elise Kessler, trying to chase it down, keeps it in bounds. Kessler gets past two. Trying to square it up to Sorensen, and then Bell Sorensen commits the foul. Boy, Maple Mountain has just been on their heels this entire extra time period. I have no idea how they've been able to fight off just waves of opposition. You gotta get some sustained possession here for Maple Mountain to get something settled down. Jensen comes across and clears. Holbrook now against Bunce. Nice defensive effort from Bunce to cut it out. Sorensen. Emmy Sorensen looks to cut it back, waiting for support. Out wide to Bell Sorensen. Bell Sorensen gets it on her right. Out to Holbrook. Holbrook cuts it back. Looking to float one in. Does and just floats past both Kessler and Page, who are near the top of the 18. 1.45 left to go. How long can Maple Mountain fight off the pressure? You got a minute 40. They've been defending for nearly almost this entire 20 minutes. Hellowell now near the edge of the box. Dean comes across. And they'll say it's a clean tackle from Chase Dean. No whistle. And now Holbrook brings it down. Page. Looking for Kessler, cleared out by McMaster, only to find Coco Hellowell. One minute left. Holbrook from distance. McMaster's is there. Jensen gets a foot on it. Brought down by Bunce. Oakley Jensen seals it high up the pitch. Sorensen out to Bell Sorensen. Sorensen can't get past Hannah Bailey. And now McMaster is trying to clear. Kessler takes it high up the pitch, but a handball called. 35 seconds left. That might just do it. And we got a stoppage here. I think the officials, I think the officials have had about enough of the complaining after the play. And Peyton Sorensen has now been shown a yellow. And now here comes a red card. Bell Sorensen is done. Sorensen's gone. Oh my goodness. Yep, she's out. Bountiful reduced to 10 once more. Yeah, she must have said something to the official as she was trotting back. Because she got a yellow, but then all of a sudden the red, the our official just went for his back pocket. So apparently the official must have heard something that Sorensen said. Bell Sorensen, the goal scorer, sent off. And it will negate the sub. She was heading off. 
she got off the field. She saw the ref reach for that back pocket and said, hey, I'm done. I'm getting out of here. And that's just not smart, period. I'm sorry, but I don't care if you're a Bountiful fan or not. That's just not smart. You can't take that. You're 29 seconds away from a penalty shootout. You know you're the best player on the team. Why? Why would you do that? Jacobson will throw it in for Maple Mountain. Cromano gets ahead on it. Holbrook coming across. Holbrook takes a deflection, and that will do it. Wow. Drama, intrigue, suspense in the 5A state championship match where the teams cannot be separated. We're going to the penalty spot. We're going to 12 yards out. Tumalip. How about those two periods of OT? You got to give credit right now to Maple Mountain. No matter how this finishes, Maple Mountain was literally on the ropes for the last, what, 20 minutes of this match. They were on the ropes for most of overtime, and yet somehow, some way, they've been able to squeeze it out in the final real minutes of the ball game. I mean, you have to give credit to this Maple Mountain side. They have just thrown everything but the kitchen sink defensively at this bountiful team. And only fitting, right? Our final game of the day is the best game of the day. Yes, Napolis, we are headed to a penalty shootout. And so we'll take a quick step away here on the Rewind Sports Network. As always, presented by Heidemann Associates. Stick with us. 1-1, one, one, we're heading to penalties. We'll be right back. Welcome, Welcome. back into the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com. 5A state championship match is going to be defined from 12 yards out. 1-1 one, one, at the end of it all. And we're heading to the penalty spot. Alex Napolis, happy to be joined by Alex Tumalip. What a match it has been between the number 10 seed and the number 5 here in the 5A state championship game. And you know what, Napolis? Like, I told you at the, when we went to commercial break, no matter what happens, this has been an incredible match. But give credit to the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. Lest we all forget what happened. They have literally been on the back heel for about the last 15 to 20 minutes, all of extra time, they were defending, scrapping, doing everything in their power. But now comes the question with um, with Bell Sorensen, the only goal scorer sent off for what... I hate to say it, but as a broadcaster, Napolis, you have to call it like it is. I have to call it like it is here. Takes an absolutely stupid, ill-advised red card for barking back at the official. And now... Uh, Bountiful is likely down their best penalty scorer here because what about Kate Holbrook? She's been on the sideline for 80 minutes and she's only played 20 minutes. How warm is she to take a penalty? Because now you're putting the ball in the hands, basically, of your star player and say, oh, here you go. The good news for Bountiful, you still have players like Elise Kessler on the field. You still have players like Coco Hellowell who are most than, more than likely going to step up and take a kick. And so now it comes down to who's going to be better in the shootout. Will it be Daisy Williams or will it be Anya Guller of Maple Mountain? After the coin toss and everything has been decided, we're going to be shooting at the north goal here at America First Field. And the most important kick to Malip heading into this spot kicks is the first. The statistic says whoever shoots first Absolutely. has the highest percentage chance of taking it in the shootout. We'll see who steps up. Absolutely. I mean, and it's going to be the loneliest walk for a shooter up to the penalty spot here. I mean, I saw two penalty shootouts last year in the playoffs in the semifinals. This year I saw, or last year in the boys' semi boys finals, we had Lehigh and Alta go to penalties. But you're under the lights, literally. Prime time, lights are brightest here. And it looks like it's going to be Micah Page, the freshman, to step up against Tanya Goli to kick off the shootout. And now I also wonder, remember, 
The goalkeeper has to be has to have a foot on the line at all times, Napolis, here in the shootout. I wonder out loud just how strict the linesmen are gonna be here for the shootout for these goalkeepers. The freshman, Micah Page against Anya Gully from 12 yards out. Referee having a discussion real quick with the goalkeepers. Laying down the law. Letting them know that they need to have their foot on. Letting them know what they need to do. And now Daisy Williams being sent to the other side. Micah Page. Pressure on the freshman. Chloe Sadler did it in 4A. Can Micah Page do the same? The first penalty of the shootout to give Bountiful a lead. I think they're waiting for the security to clear out. I think they're waiting for security to clear out that corner down in the far end. You're not again, you're not allowed to have fans on the end of the stadium. Here comes Page. Steps up. It's a save by Gullers! Denied! At the line! Well, that time Micah Page tries to step up to the left side and chicken out the goalkeeper. Tanya Gully keeps her line and keeps herself low. If you're a goalkeeper in this sport, in this in this sport of women's soccer, you want to try to hit it towards the corner and towards the side netting because the goalkeepers are not as athletic as in the men's game. That time it was low, but it was not into the corner. A poor penalty by Page. Maple Mountain now with a chance to swing the axe. It's gonna be number nine, Ruth Swain, to step up for the Eagles. Swain from 12 yards out, off the post and in. Maple Mountain take the lead. Well, we saw Bountiful get denied twice by the crossbar on that same end of the field, Napolis. It's only fitting that they go under the crossbar and in that time. What a shot. Sent the keeper the wrong way, opens the hips up, goes top corner off the bar and in. Maple Mountain in front here in the shootout. If you're Bountiful, how much are you thinking about last year where you missed the first one, went down, and the question will be answered here as Holbrook steps up and puts it into the back of the net, ties it up. 1-1, but still advantage, Maple Mountain. Boy, that woman needs business, doesn't she? Took the ill-advised fouls and the yellow card, yeah, early in the extra session, but that time just steps up, sends Gully the wrong way, and just smashes it right between the posts, right in between the RSL logo behind the net. Stepping up for the Eagles. It's gonna be, oh, I can't see a number on that. Steps up, the shot, it's in! And it's Chromanoak who puts it into the back of the net. 2-1, Maple Mountain. Well, that time she did what I thought Micah Page should have done. Hit it low into the bottom corner of the net. That time sends the keeper the wrong way. And a quick trot up here by Coco Hellowell, the best scorer for the Red Hawks. You're, we're approaching do or die time here for the Red Hawks. Hellowell against Gully. From 12 yards out, steps up, puts it into the bottom corner. Great taken penalty from Hellowell to tie it up. How cool do you have to be to do that? I mean, Hellowell, the best scorer on the team, does what, like I said, Micah Page should have done. Hit it low and hit it with pace into the bottom corner of the net. That time chickens out the goalkeeper. Went the right way, but not enough to get on the end of that one. And here comes Root Swain. Jukes. It's Kesley Jukes, the goal scorer. Yeah, stepping up. Is Jukes, excuse me, yes. Jukes against Williams. 
from the spot. Juke steps up and puts it into the top corner. 3-2, Maple Mountain. How about that from Jukes? You gotta have some guts to pull that off. Send the keeper the wrong way and put it top 90. That is some penalty right there by, by Kesley Jukes who opened the scoring here. And now, another big penalty here for Emmy Sorensen. Emmy Sorensen, the freshman, to step up and keep Bountiful alive. Emmy takes the shot, it's saved by Gully, but it's not over yet. Tanya Gully just may have crowned herself queen right there. What a save. I thought that was going up her 90, but it wasn't hit with enough pace into that top left corner. And here we are, Napolis match point for the 10 seed Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. It's gonna be Hannah Bailey, the senior captain, who's gonna step forward and try to win it for Maple Mountain on this kick. Hannah Bailey, who scored the winner in the semifinals. Silence at America First Field, takes it. And Maple Mountain have done it! Cinderella prevails as the number 10, Maple Mountain! 5A State Champions! Hannah Bailey has just made a champion out of the Maple Mountain Eagles! And the underdog, the number 10, prevails. Deja vu for the Red Hawks. What did I talk about, Napolis? In the intermission between extra time and the penalty shootout, this Maple Mountain team, you could tell, they had it. They knew they had it. And how about Tanya Goli, the senior? Two huge saves. And Maple Mountain, a la the Harriman Mustangs from last year, from 2022 in the boys soccer finals. Man. Wow, what a game. What drama of the highest story here at America First Field. Incredible. And for the second time in school history and for the first time since 2017, Maple Mountain are taking the crown. For the Red Hawks, Alex, it has to be said, back to back years, missing out on the crown in the penalty shootout. Bountiful, who played such an intense overtime, couldn't find the breakthrough, couldn't find the golden goal. And Maple Mountain edges him out in the shootout. And like we talked about, something was just missing for Bountiful. Something was just missing, whether it was the final pass or the final ball or the final shot or the last decision. It, it just wasn't there for some reason. And it was Maple Mountain who had every answer at the beginning of this match. Stunned, stunned the Red Hawks early with that early goal in the 12th minute. But your heart breaks for Bountiful. I mean, you're right. Two years losing in a penalty shootout. It just goes to show Napolis clutch, clutch play in sports is a very, very cruel mistress. The hero. Has to be Anya Gully for Maple Mountain, making two saves from the penalty spot. Real quick here on the near side, south north side of the stadium, Bountiful gets ready to take the second place trophy. Back-to-back -back years, runner-ups, 
in the 5A state champion, or excuse me, five, girls soccer 5A. Over on the far side, here comes the trophy for Maple Mountain. And you can probably know right now, words probably get into them over at the football game. The news is probably breaking right now across that area on the south shores of Utah Lake that the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles are bringing home a title. First the team picture, a little bit of celebration. And now Maple Mountain makes their way to the middle circle for the trophy. And there it is. Maple Mountain Eagles. The 5A state champions. And not to play our words, Alex Napolis, but what's pasted all over America First Field here has been a mantra for years for Real Salt Lake. Believe. It's pasted everywhere. It's in the hearts of this community that backs RSL. Maple Mountain had belief. And now it's come to fruition. What a ride for the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. And that's going to be one heck of a happy bus ride back home tonight. The number 10, the underdogs, now hold up the trophy in front of their home fans, or their traveling fans, I should say. And that's going to do it for us here on the Rewind Sports Network. Tumalip, your final thoughts on what has been a fantastic day of nonstop football here from America First Field. I mean, absolutely incredible. I mean, I mean, you just take a look at the celebrations down here. We've seen these celebrations all day long. I mean, this has just been amazing to see the quality of these teams that have been here today. Truly, these are the six best teams now that have made it to the top. But the three best teams we found out today, Green Canyon, Lone Peak, was definitely the best team in 6A by far, and also Maple Mountain. But we can't forget, of course, you just name dropped her for the Heidemann Associates Woman of the Match. She's getting interviewed right now. You see down there by, by KUTV, ABC4. Anya Goli, I mean, Napolis. Anya, Anya Goli literally kept this team in the match for most of this game. You have to get credit to her. And then how about the two massive saves she came up with in the penalty shootout to give Maple Mountain the win. Other than that, nothing really happened today. <laughs> Incredible story there as the sophomore goalkeeper Anya Goli makes the difference for Maple Mountain in the shootout. And again, it is the number 10 Maple Mountain who edged the Bountiful Red Hawks in the shootout four goals to two. That's going to do it for us here from America First Field on the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com. As always, presented by Heidemann and Associates. Want to give a big shout out to Vince Francis, who's been here with us all day, sticking it out, working the camera. From Alex Tumalip, from myself, Alex Napolis, and from the entire Rewind Sports family, we thank you for watching. Everybody have a good night, get home safe, and we'll see you next week. Good night, everyone.